Hi and welcome to C3 Life Online. Gavin Gray will be sharing his thoughts in just a moment uh, on the life of Peter as we continue our series looking at the life of one of Jesus' closest disciples and how his good and bad days can encourage us all in our walk with God. Uh, Before that, if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe and make sure you leave a comment. Let us know where you are tuning in from. Uh, You can also get in touch with us and share your thoughts and any prayer requests that you might have through our website, just head to c3.life forward slash connect, or you can use the QR code that's on your screen right now. Great, well, here's the message from Gavin. Hi everyone, well we are continuing with our series today looking at the life of Peter, looking at what we can learn from his life and his experience as a disciple of Jesus so that we too can grow in our own discipleship and fellowship of him. And I'm going to jump straight in with the main point of what I want to communicate to us today and I want to focus on this main thought. God chooses to use imperfect people to outwork his perfect plan. Let's read John chapter 21 together. It says this, says, Afterward, Jesus appeared again to disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize it was was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them. And he did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he came and said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him for the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Now, Peter is an enigma. On the one hand, he has some amazing high points as a disciple of Jesus, such as the time when Jesus asked the question, who do you say I am? 
in that, that moment, it was Peter who replies with the revelation from the Holy Spirit that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. This was an amazing moment in the life of Peter and also in the gospel of Jesus because Jesus replies to Peter and says, you have not heard this from man, but this has been revealed to you by the Holy Spirit, followed by you are Peter, the rock, and upon this I build my church. Imagine how Peter must have felt in that moment. Out of all the disciples that the Holy Spirit could have given this revelation to, it was him who was able to answer the question posed by Jesus. After that moment, he must have felt 10 foot tall. He must have felt like he was walking on cloud nine and walking with his head held high. On the other hand, though, Peter also has a number of low moments in his journey as a disciple because there are a number of times in his life when things go horribly wrong. One of the most significant is recorded in Matthew chapter 16 when Jesus is predicting his death and all the things he has to suffer. Peter speaks out and he says, Jesus, that will never ever happen to you. In that moment, he was probably expecting Jesus to to be happy and, and to thank him for saying this and publicly like acknowledging, Peter, you've got it right again. However, in that moment as he says this, Jesus replies to him and says these words, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have the mind of concerns of God, but merely human concerns. How many of us know it is not a good day when Jesus is saying to you, get behind me, Satan. Then if we flick over to Matthew chapter 26, we see again, this is not a great time for Peter at all. First of all, we're told that Jesus and some of his disciples are in the Garden of Gethsemane. And this is literally just a few hours before Jesus is about to be arrested and handed over to be put to death. And Jesus asked Peter and two of the other disciples, he says, stay with me and keep watch with me. Jesus then goes off to pray and we're told that when he comes back, he finds the disciples, they're not keeping watch, but actually they've gone asleep. Now, this was one of the most vulnerable moments of, for Jesus ever. And here were three of his closest disciples, Peter included, and they've gone asleep. So, Peter, uh, so Jesus asked, Peter, could you not keep watch with me for just one hour? He then states again, watch and pray so that you do not fall into temptation. We're then told that Jesus goes away again and leaves them. And when he comes back for the second time, he finds these three disciples who he's just warned about. He now finds them asleep again. This time he leaves them to sleep and he goes off for a third time. And when he comes back again, they're still fast asleep. So he wakes them and he says this, are you still sleeping? Look, the hour has come. The Son of Man is to be delivered into the hand of sinners. You know, we also read in that chapter how Jesus predicts to Peter that he will deny Jesus three times. You know, on hearing these words from Jesus, Peter says, Jesus, that I will never, ever do that. You are wrong. And actually, what, is, what he actually says is this. He says, even if everyone else falls away on account of you, I never will. Even if I have to die with you, I will never, ever disown you. And yet, what do we see just a few verses later? We see Jesus is arrested. He is put on trial. He is sentenced to death. And as all of this is happening, we're then told that suddenly somebody in the crowd notices Peter and says, hey, you were with Jesus. You were one of his followers. In that moment, Peter's like, no, I'm not. I, I don't know what you're talking about. And then again, someone else recognizes him and says, you are, you are one of his followers. I, I, I know that you are. And again, Peter replies in that moment, I don't know him and I don't know what you're talking about. And then a third person recognizes him and he says, surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. And for the third time, Peter replies, I am not. I do not know this man. As he denies Jesus for the third time, we're told a, a rooster crows and instantly Peter remembers the words that Jesus has spoken. And the Bible tells us 
that as a result, he goes outside and he weeps. After three years of following Jesus, seeing everything that Jesus did, miracle after miracle, healing after healing, after hearing all the teaching and being there for all the key parts of Jesus' life, here is Peter and he realises what he has done and he feels he's let Jesus down. He feels like a failure. He feels disappointed. He feels like he's let both himself and Jesus down. A question for us today is this. How often are you and I like Peter? How often are our lives a, a journey of amazing encounters with Jesus, at times of amazing revelation of who he is and his love and his forgiveness for us, and yet contrasted with times of, of getting it wrong, or of times of uncertainty and maybe even times of doubt? How often is our journey a, a time of our old nature, our old selves rising up again as we try to live out this new life that Jesus calls us to live? I have some news for us today. Even as followers of Jesus, there'll be times when we get things right and there'll be times when we get things wrong. There'll be times when we give Jesus our all again on a Sunday in a church gathering and and in times when we get ourselves all muddled up again just a few days later. Now, because of all this, it can be so easy to become even more like Peter, thinking and believing that we've now let Jesus down, feeling ashamed and feeling that we've missed the mark. You know, one massive impact of our low moments is that it can often lead us to feel disqualified from following Jesus anymore. It can have this, this feeling of, of surely Jesus can't love me any longer, or maybe he doesn't want to be close to me. But I want to remind you, though, of my starting statement. God chooses to use imperfect people to outwork his perfect plan. You know, we live in a society that is fixed on perfection. We are bombarded with the pressure of living perfect lives. Now, I was recently in uh, the dentist with my son, and I noticed that posted all over the walls in all the strategic points were photos detailing what it means to have a perfect smile. It was outlining that, that this perfect smile could, could be for you as well. All of this could be yours for less than £5,000. I mean, what a bargain. You know, just take a look at our social media. We all have the pressure of presenting perfect lives presenting perfect children, our perfect meals, and our perfect days out. Now, social media pressurizes us to take in the perfect shots in order to create magical moments to portray to others. We even have the filter option. You know, when you take a photo and the sky is too gray, no worries, it doesn't matter. There's a filter that can make the sky look bluer. Maybe your skin is looking a bit tired. Then no worries, there's a filter to make your skin look tighter and to make your cheeks have just a little bit more colour. Or how about this one? You look good in the photo. Everything else looks great in the photo. But you notice there's one thing in the background that doesn't look right. So what can we do nowadays? We can ask AI to even edit out part of the photo to remove it completely so it looks like it was never there to begin with. We live in a world uh, obsessed with perfection. All of this pressure to be perfect continues to make us question in our own lives, am I good enough? Am I accepted? Am I included? The constant feeling or concern of being rejected by others makes us want to live this perfect life. And then we project those feelings onto our relationship with God. Am I really enough for Jesus? Am I really accepted for who I really am? And when we mess up, just like Peter did, we can often feel like we've blown it, or it can put a false sense of space between us and God in our feelings and our minds. But I want to encourage us today, when it comes to Peter and everything he did in his life, every moment he messed up, we can focus on one or two things here 
because there are two sides of the story. Either we can be fixated on Peter's failure towards Jesus or we can be fixated on Jesus' continual faithfulness towards Peter. It is so easy to focus on our failure as our emotions respond to the circumstances that we find ourselves in. But in those moments, we need to remember and remind ourselves that Jesus is always faithful. I love the fact that no matter how many times Peter failed, Jesus always provided a way back. An example is in Mark chapter 16. Mary and the women go to the tomb and and of course Jesus isn't there. He is alive. And and the ladies are told this, says, don't be alarmed. Go, uh, you are looking for Jesus Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. This says this in verse 7. But go, tell the disciples and Peter, He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. I I love that. I love that little detail that we can just so easily read past. It says, go and tell the disciples and Peter that Jesus is alive. So the inclusion of Peter specifically was there to help him know it's not over. You've not blown it. And this is a moment for him to embrace as well. You know, even more than this, we see this powerfully in John chapter 21, our opening Bible passage we read a few moments ago. This is where Jesus is on the shore and he appears to disciples and they have breakfast with him. I love this moment. What a great moment. It says that after they finish their breakfast, Jesus calls Peter aside and he says to him a simple yet powerful question. Peter, do you love me? And as we saw, Peter replies back, yes, Jesus, you know I love you. And Jesus says, then go feed my sheep. Now, in that moment, Jesus reveals to Peter that he is forgiven, that he is restored, and again, he is commissioned. It is in that moment Where Jesus says these words, it has the power to take away any feelings Peter may have about not being worthy enough, about not being accepted, or being a failure, as Jesus shows him that he still loves him. He's still accepted, and he's still called to be part of God's plan to spread the good news of Jesus. So with all this in mind today, I've got two quick things that I want to take hold of for our lives. The first thing is this. Jesus isn't looking for perfection. He's looking for a heart that loves him. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says this. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must be perfect. No, it doesn't say that at all. It says this. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please God Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. I love that because it tells us that that when we come to God, faith isn't about us having to be perfect, but our faith is us earnestly seeking God and putting our faith in him. See, when we earnestly seek him, it's not a perfection thing. It's, It's actually a heart response. However I feel, whatever I'm going through, I'm going to seek him. So does our our imperfection give us license to do whatever we want or an excuse to live below how Jesus wants us to live? No, but Jesus isn't looking for perfection. He's looking for a heart that loves him. Number two, Jesus doesn't respond to perfection. He responds to faith. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says this, for we live by faith and not by sight. You know, when we look at our lives, we can see our imperfections. We see our doubts. We see our failures. But when we look to him, we see that he's able to do all things and that in him we are made whole and we are made righteous and we are being made righteous. It's God's grace in our lives 
that makes us worthy. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9 and 10 says this, But my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. I think so often we, we feel, oh, I'm not included, I, I can't do it because we know our own selves. And yet we look at these verses and it tells us that because of Jesus, his grace is more than sufficient for us. And actually in our weakness, he is made perfect. I want to encourage today, church, don't let your failure keep you from following Jesus. Don't let your failure put distance between you and God, but rather in those moments, those moments where we all go through, when we, when we feel I can't go on because I've let Jesus down, in those moments, draw close to him again and allow his faithfulness to minister to you. And above all things, we always remember that God chooses to use us in the fulfilling of his plans, not because we could ever be good enough or worthy enough, but because through him, he is revealing who he is to, uh, through, to others through what he's doing in our lives. Let me encourage you today as I get ready to pray. Take hold of Jesus. Take hold of the journey. And let's see Jesus move through us and in us because he always used us, even in our perfection, to outwork his perfect plans. Let us pray together. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for your word today. And we thank you for the example of Peter. Lord God, we thank you that, that there on the beach, when, when Peter could have felt that he'd blown it, when he could have felt that it was over, thank you, Jesus, that you invite him back into relationship with you again. That there on that, on that beach, you ask him the question, Peter, do you love me? And as he responds to that question, you equip him and commission him, commission him again. So God, I just pray for us in our lives too. In those moments when, when we are like Peter, we have the high moments and the low moments. In those low moments, help us to remember to put our eyes on you, to remember that you always bring us back. You can always uh, include us back into your plans again because it's not about perfection. It's about a heart seeking after you. And it's about a heart reaching out in faith. So I pray you help us all today, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. i
Brilliant. Well, hey, thanks for watching uh, today's message. If you'd like to find out more about our church or ask a question, if you've got some a prayer requests, then you can get in touch with us. Head to c3.life forward slash connect and just fill out the form there. If you're in the Leeds or the York area, we'd love to give you a warm welcome uh, to any to one of our in-person services. Uh, they meet every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. And all the details of our services are on our website at c3.life. Finally, if you'd like to bring a tithe or an offering, you can do that via the link that's on your screen right now. Otherwise, we'll be back here next Sunday at 10.30 a.m. with another message that's going to hopefully will help you encounter Jesus and walk in discipleship with him. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so as not to miss a single one. Great. Well, hope to see you then. Have a great week. God bless.